Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I'm going to really talk to you guys tonight about the importance of what uh, spiritual momentum really looks like. Not just the importance of, of what it looks like, but why. Why it's important uh, along with how do we obtain this momentum. And not only do we obtain it, because it's one thing to gain momentum, but it's another thing to keep it when you're opposed or forced or up against resistance. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. And so I'm going to pray for us before we get started. Father, we thank you that tonight we are uh, in a safe place, Lord, worshiping you freely, God. And, and, and Lord, I pray that we don't take for granted this house that we get to gather in, Father, that we get to, to plant our roots in, that we get to be transparent before you in together, Father. I thank you that we don't take for granted, that we remember that you, Jesus Christ, died for us to have a place that we can call home, a place that we can worship you, and a place where we can be transformed in and have our hearts restored and have our broken hearts mended and our souls transformed. And so I thank you, Lord, that we don't take that for granted. But yet tonight, we, we celebrate it, Father. We, we don't have to wait for Easter. We don't have to wait for Christmas. We don't have to wait for the next big event to celebrate what you did for the church, to celebrate what you did for the world. We don't have to wait for it, Father. In fact, we can take this very moment now to praise you, to celebrate you for all that you are and all that you will continue to be for the body. And so I pray that our, our, our hearts are open to receive your word. Our ears are ready to hear because we know that it is by faith it is hearing the word of God that builds our faith. And so I pray that we are ready to absorb your word tonight and ready to activate it as we leave. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, you know, as you see on the screens here, we're going to be talking about spiritual momentum. Uh, you know, momentum in general, you hear this word, uh, you know, you hear it in different scenarios, different applications. Uh, you may hear it in the athletic world. You may hear it uh, in the church. You may hear it different places and different terminology and different ways of explaining momentum. But I really do feel like the, the actual word momentum is actually underestimated as just another fancy word, another way to explain uh, something that moves or but it's really it's really such a powerful word it carries such weight to it and the reason why it carries such weight to it in fact according to physics this law of momentum that you you and I wouldn't even have the ability to propel forward with our bodies without this momentum. Momentum is the driving force of what allows us to walk. It's the force of what allows our cars to move. It's the force of what allows this earth to spin. It's, 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 it's a driving force, so it carries power. We, we, we take it for granted, but without momentum, nothing moves. Nothing propels. In fact, momentum is one of the few things that defies gravity. You know, when, when you build enough energy with momentum, it can, it can propel stuff up hills, up mountains, and, and it can bring, bring heavy objects such as a boulder or a rock um, up a hill that otherwise would never be possible. And so there is power uh, that's sustained in this word momentum. And so, for instance, for example, take a, take a bicycle, right? You, you're, you're riding a bike, and you're learning how to ride a bike, and and it's, it's, it's the usual scenario, right? You're, you're learning and, and you're, you're taught to, okay, well, first you want to straddle the bike and you want to kind of get your balance centered. And then you start by putting one foot because you need the bike to be able to stand up straight so that way you can actually gain traction. Uh, if you were to remove your other foot, if you just hopped on the pedal, that bike's falling and you're falling with it. And so we, we think about momentum and riding a bike. Uh, you, you have to gain traction in order for the bike to go and you can pedal and you can pedal and you can keep going and now you can get the bike going. But listen, the moment you stop pedaling, if you decide to stop pedaling, eventually that bike's going to tilt. And if you don't have any support on either side of that bike, that bike is falling over. So momentum carries things. It, it propels things. It pushes things forward, right? It, it otherwise supports things as well. If you think about it in that direction, uh, you know, that the function of the bike, when you pedal, that momentum of that pedal transfers energy to the bike chains, right? Then the bike chains then begins to transfer energy to these wheels, and these wheels then transfers energy to the ground, and now you have this movement going. And so when we talk about momentum, 
one of the first things that we have to understand is that neither, when, when you and I decided to follow Jesus, when you and I said, listen, God, I want to follow you. I want to live for you. I want to dedicate my life to you. I want to give you my everything. The moment you and I decided that, we didn't create momentum. We, we didn't make it happen. What we did was we inherited the momentum that Jesus started for us. We, we then allowed the momentum of Jesus Christ that he started while he was on this earth of, of creating miracles and of, of, of sharing of this good news of hope of salvation. And we took this momentum that he had and then he transferred it to us. He said that when I send, uh, I do not leave you an orphan, but I send you my Holy Spirit, a comforter. And so he didn't leave us alone. He transferred us a momentum for us to carry for us to sustain, for us to propel forward, for us to support. But what happens when you stop this momentum or when you, when you stop this pedaling or when you, when you stop propelling forward, uh, not only do you stand still, but now there's a risk of collision. If, if you think about, you know, car accidents and how, how uh, atrocious they can be or how just, just, they're not pretty to look at. It's, it's, it's not a fun thing to even be in. Um, but you think about this force and you think about uh, what happens when all of a sudden this momentum uh, comes to when you have two cars that are traveling at a speed and, and there's momentum. There's all this energy that's stored up. Okay. And, and it's funny because you, it's not funny, but it's interesting because you look at, sometimes you look at these car crashes and you're thinking about the distance and how it happened. And in your mind, you're like, how could that, how could that, something like that turned out to be this disastrous thing. And it doesn't make sense because they weren't that far apart or they weren't going there 20 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour. Sounds slow to us, but the momentum that was building and once it stopped, created such a massive collision that now there was all kinds of destruction taking place. So when momentum comes to a halt, that's when we run the risk of collision or of, of an accident or some kind of destruction. And so our momentum, okay, once, once this momentum has transferred to us, once we just said, yes, Jesus, I'm going to follow you. Yes, Jesus, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to get to know you a little bit more. I'm going to serve your people. I'm going to make sure that, that, that I am living according to your word. I want to I wanna learn to be a follower. Now, this momentum that has started, it, it now becomes this irresistible force, regardless of how we may have began before we decided to follow Jesus or where we are at that moment we decided to follow Jesus. We inherited this energy, this momentum, this, this, this power from Jesus in order to push us forward. Now, now why is that important? Why, why is it important that we know that there is a force that we inherited. Well, the, the reason, one of the reasons is, listen, Jesus said it himself that there will be troubles. Listen, there will be resistance. And I know, you know, as much as, as, much as it's important to know that living a life uh, for Christ is not easy, it's also important to know that it can be enjoyable. But in order for it to be enjoyable, you have to understand that it's your responsibility to maintain momentum. It's our responsibility to maintain this force that Jesus transferred to us in order for us to break through or overcome resistance. And one of the cool actual definitions of resistance is the ability to overcome or the, the, the definition of momentum. One of the cool definitions is to the ability to overcome resistance. So when you talk about momentum and now spiritual momentum, we know for one there's troubles, we know there's obstacles, but Jesus is presenting to us this power by his Holy Spirit that we are able to now use to overcome what is already expected, what is already promised, what is already going to happen. We already know what's coming. We can already see it happening. We see the pattern. We know what's coming next. We don't like how it feels, but Jesus says, listen, I've given you the ability to overcome resistance. I've given you momentum. I've transferred you this momentum. And so go with me to 2 Thessalonians so I can give you an example of this. Chapter 1, verse 4. 
See, spiritual momentum, it's, it's maintained by standing strong in the face of struggles and obstacles. It's like, it's like when, you, when you're riding your bike, uh, in order for you to keep going, you have to pedal, but you come across a hill or two, and now the pedaling isn't as easy as when you're on flat ground, or the pedaling is definitely not as easy as you were going downhill. And so now there's pressure, that needs, there's resistance that needs to be overcome. But in order to overcome that resistance, you need some momentum. And that momentum needs to be maintained. Are you there? Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse four. I'm going to read out of the Amplified version. It says this. It says, therefore, we speak of you with pride among the churches of God for your steadfastness, your unflinching endurance and patience and your firm faith in the midst of all the persecution and crushing, listen, crushing distress, which you endure. I'm going to read that, that last part. And your firm faith in the midst of all the persecution and watch crushing, crushing distress, which you endured. See, momentum is a, a moving force that pushes through resistance. It, it, it reminds me of, of, of you know, Jesus. And, and we see it all throughout the Gospels, all throughout the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We see it happening. And it's almost like the moment where he actually can catch a break, a breath, a time of peace, a time of, of rest. There's this, there's this foolish, just stupid opposition that rises up. And all of a sudden, there's this brilliant person who, for the sake of just making it hard for Jesus wants to conjure up now a time where they can embarrass him in front of his people, his followers, embarrass him in front of the religious leaders. Now, they're, 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 the moment he gets to rest, he has to fight. The one chance that he gets to actually maybe even celebrate what's happening, he has to push. And now he's back into a place of where he has to overcome resistance. And so when we think of, of spiritual momentum, we can learn a lot from the fact that, listen, Jesus didn't have a chance for this momentum to be altered. His, his, his opportunity to allow momentum to, to, to alter was robbed from him the moment these religious leaders decided that he wasn't worthy or he wasn't real or he wasn't who he said he was. And now I'm going to make it hard for him because he all of a sudden is making a difference that I have spent years studying to do and can't. That's who Jesus was, a man of momentum. So the decision to follow Jesus meant that, 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 that in, in Thessalonica, this decision they made to follow Jesus meant, listen, they were going to experience a series of events. See, Paul, Paul is, is congratulating them because the truth was, is they had to endure, they had to endure, and they knew they were going to. See, their transformation didn't take place. It wasn't, it wasn't this beautiful, emotional moment where there were tears and there was, there was a, a time of, of applause from the church. There was a time of, of celebration or uh, th there wasn't, listen, they were being persecuted the moment they decided to identify themselves with following Jesus. There was no break. There was no breath. Resistance grew. And as resist resistance continued to grow, they had to make the decision for their momentum to grow as well. And so those series of events that happened, they created this momentum for, the, for those in Thessalonica, for Thessalonica. They, it created this momentum for them or this strength, and this strength is what taught them to overcome. And so Paul is acknowledging, listen, I know you've had to go through this, but I know that by going through this, you've now developed such a strength that you can now overcome. Church, tonight, you, you're, some of you are in a place where you have experienced a series of events. And it seems like each event has led you to a place of frustration. Each, each event has led you to a place of disappointment. The next event has left you to a place of feeling breathless, of feeling like I can't even stand anymore. I can't even get up. It's one after the other, one after the other. And if Paul were here today, he would tell you, listen, I congratulate you because what you're enduring is causing you to, over, to have the strength that's going to overcome. I congratulate you. I don't know, but I don't think congratulations is what I want to hear in a time like that. 
I don't know that job well done is what I need to encourage me at a time where I'm getting beat around. But Paul wasn't speaking in vain. He wasn't speaking from a place of, of just feeling great about the church and feeling great. No, he was speaking from a place of experience. And so as he's congratulating them, there's a man who's also been to prison. He's congratulating them, and in some cases, he's in prison at that moment. And so, yes, congratulations is what they need to hear. Because they could have decided to allow their momentum to be stopped or put at a standstill, which would then prevent them from fulfilling what God has called them to do. They could have decided to say, stop, I'm done, enough. I've had it. I don't want anything to do with it. They had that choice. But what they decided to do was to continue going, to keep pedaling through resistance, to keep pushing through the pressure in order for them to build this character that would allow them to overcome. That was the Thessalonians. That was that, that church. That was what Paul was referring to when he was saying that. And so those series of events, those persecutions, those, 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 those moments of being distressed, all of that caused them to be able to endure and taught them how to overcome. And so go with me now in Acts chapter 20. Verse 18. We're going to read verses 18 through 24. And it says this. When they arrived. And now this is, now this is a, a, an account of what Paul. You're going to hear Paul speaking right now. Uh, what's happening as he is. Uh, on this journey, leaving Asia, the province of Asia, and, and he's leaving, and he's, uh, you know, he's, he's continuing on his journey, and it's a bittersweet moment because he knows what's ahead of him, uh, but where he's coming from, he's got all the support and all this encouragement and all this strength, and he's proud of what this church and this province has become, but listen to what he says when he's, as he's preparing to leave. It says in verse 18, when they arrived, he declared, you know, from the day I set foot in a province of Asia until now, I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many tears. Many tears. It's almost like those, those two words don't belong in the same sentence. Humbly with many tears. That means that there was pain, but he remained in humility. I have endured the trials that came to me from the plots of the Jews. Mind you, we're hearing from a Jewish man, okay? So I have endured the trials that came to me from the plots of the Jews. I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your homes. Verse 21, I have had one message for Jews and Greeks alike. The necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God and of having faith in our Lord Jesus. And now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me except, now watch this. He says, I'm bound by the Spirit, okay? In other words, I am I'm being compelled. I am, I'm under the obedience. I, I can't help but to obey the Holy Spirit as he's compelling me and drawing me to go to Jerusalem. It's, 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 I can't deny it, okay? I can't get away from that. I'm bound to it. I, I can't. He wants me to go to Jerusalem. I need to go to Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit, God wants me to go there. I need to go there. It's going to happen. Okay, I'm bound by the Spirit. And I don't know what awaits me except that the Holy Spirit, okay, listen. The Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. So this, the same Spirit that he's yielding to is telling him guess what you're about to leave asia and you're going to jail you're going to going to jail but now they're suffering lying ahead isn't now you're listen you're about to leave this beautiful place of support where you've groomed this church and they're standing on their own they're independent they're strong they're encouraging they're they're propelling you the great job paul you did it and here he is now yielding to the spirit of god Who's, in, who's compelling him and telling him, yes, you're going to Jerusalem, but you should already know this, that you will be in jail. Not just once, not just twice, but in city after city after city. 
And there will be suffering lying ahead. And so I, I, I feel like this here was such a defining moment for Paul. Now, and when I say defining, you know, I don't, I don't, it's not like this was a profound moment. This wasn't, this wasn't put in the history books uh, as far as, as far as we know as it, it wasn't like this huge, when people think of Paul, they don't, they don't specifically talk about this very moment. It was a circumstance, but why it was defining, why it became a defining moment is because in this moment, he had a decision to make that he can either move forward and allow and not allow this momentum of his to be haltered or to be brought to a stop, or he could end and call it quits. And now all that momentum that he built up following Jesus, all that momentum he built up building the church would now cause for the destruction of all those that were following him. But he decided to move forward. So this was a defining moment for Paul. Paul could have, Paul, look, the Holy Spirit was giving him a heads up. He could have easily taken this heads up and said, I've heard enough. I'll end it right there. I'll stop right there. But he didn't. And I know that, you know, we, we face a lot of defining moments. Um, listen, defi- don't, don't let a defining moment be this great big event in your life. I, I believe this, that we sometimes, we wait for this huge turning point in order for us to define what our lives are going to look like. But I believe that it starts in the small things. It starts in those daily decisions that you have to make. It starts in those, those little vows, those, those, those promises that you make to people that, that it's a little bit hard for you to keep. But yet you decide, you know what, I'm going to keep it. You know, it's those little things that, that, that there's the little habit that you created that's not really healthy for you spiritually. And uh, you know it's not healthy for you spiritually. But it's that daily decision that you make to break it. That daily decision that you take step a step forward to breaking that habit is where it defines the character of who you'll be. It's not going to be that life-turning moment where you get this, the, you know, you've been pursuing a career for years and you finally got it. And now, congratulations, you've defined who you are. No. It's not going to be the moment where all of a sudden you've worked, worked hard, 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 and, and you've lost it all. And all of a sudden that defines who you are. No. Those defining moments are going to be those daily decisions that you and I make to pursue Jesus one step closer, even when it's not convenient, even when it's difficult, when momentum seems to be at a low rate. When when you're just getting your bike off the ground and you're you're approaching a hill that's incredibly steep and you're you're about to climb this hill. But you all you have to do is make that decision to start pedaling. And it's in that decision to start pedaling when you have a defining moment of your character and what your momentum is going to look like spiritually. Verse 24, this is where it gets real, okay? This is where Paul, Paul is now making it very clear. Here, here's, here's what I want you to know, church. My life is worth nothing to me. It's worth nothing unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. It's worth nothing. Being comfortable in this place, getting that promotion, okay, seeing, seeing my, my career, seeing it explode, seeing, seeing my friends and, and family and, and everyone get, get, get celebrated and all that. Like, listen, that means nothing unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by Jesus Christ. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. And so Paul considered it worth it. He said, listen, it's worth it for me to maintain this momentum, even though it's getting rocky, even though the winds are picking up, even though the pressure is increasing, even though the resistance is increasing, it's worth it. In fact, that there would be trouble even awaiting him, he still considered it worth it. And so now going back to, to this bike example, you know, I was, I was reading through um, a few articles actually of some techniques. I was thinking about momentum and, and spiritual momentum and, and the, the actual scientific part of it and what that means. And so I was just reading through a, a few articles and I came across this article of these professional bikers and 
they have these, uh, you know, techniques of what they do when it comes to short, steep hills, especially in, in the Europe area. Uh, they have, like, hills everywhere. And so uh, we, there's a bunch of cyclists, and, and, and they've all sharing these tips with each other. So I came across this article, and they have five things that they do in order for them to approach these steep hills. And I thought it was interesting because as I'm reading it, I'm like, interesting enough, this sounds a lot like what the church needs to do when it comes to these things, when it comes to uh, approaching our mountains, approaching our, our steep hills. And so I, I just want to share with you uh, five ways to maintain your spiritual momentum, especially because especially it's one thing to maintain your momentum with God when you're not doing anything. It's one thing to... To maintain your momentum with God when there's nothing being activated from you. But it's another thing to maintain your momentum with God when you begin to actually serve and, 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 and actually go out and reach his people and do that work that has been assigned to us to spread the gospel. Now, as the resistance increases, it gets a little challenging. But I have five little tips for you today. Are you ready? Five things, five ways to maintain spiritual momentum while serving God's vision. Number one, look ahead. So I thought this was pretty obvious, but the cyclist, what he was making clear was as you're, as you're approaching this, this hill, as you're approaching this mountain, uh, you can't be so focused on, on what the bike's going to do. You can't be so focused on the, 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 the first steps you're going to take what you first need to know is what are you up against? What you first need to know is where are you going? What is ahead? What is the finish point of this? Where is it leading to? And in Philippians 3.13 says this. It says, I do not, or Philippians 3 verse 12 through 13 says, I do not claim that I have already succeeded or have already become perfect, I keep striving to win the prize for which Christ Jesus has already won me to himself. Of course, my brothers and sisters, I really do not think that I have already won it. The one thing I do, however, is to forget what's behind me and do my best to reach what is ahead. And so as, as this cyclist was explained to look ahead, I thought, listen, how are we ever going to gain the momentum that is needed to overcome what we're facing if we don't even know what's ahead of us if we don't have the vision of what God has placed in our life or what he has placed in front of us for our family for ourselves for our church for our city if we can't put our focus on what lies ahead if we can't simply look up and look ahead if we if we don't have the vision that is needed for us to propel forward then we've already begun to to deny ourselves of the momentum that's needed We've already begun to forfeit the energy that's needed to get through to that. So number one is to look ahead. And number two is anticipate the need to change gears. Now, of course, he was referring to as he's going up this hill, uh, as he's inclining, the incline is going to change the, the needs of his bike and what it needs to do, the performance of it. It's going to have to change what's required for it to go higher and higher and higher. So instead of waiting till you get to that point, before, listen, before you even start pedaling, he's saying you need to anticipate that you're going to have to change some gears and when you're going to need to change them. And, and listen, here's an here's a actual really cool, interesting fact. See, a change, an alteration, when, when, when momentum is changed, when it's altered, it's actually scientifically called an impulse. An impulse. And so I believe if you really pay close attention to these occurrences that you have in life that, that challenge you or leave you breathless or beat you up from time to time, you'll, you'll start to notice that somewhere in that mess, there's a pattern. And if you could just take a step back and anticipate this pattern, anticipate what's needed, you'll begin to learn how to navigate. And without, instead of acting on impulse, instead of allowing this, this explosive challenge to throw you off course and cause an impulse and ruin your momentum, you'll begin to anticipate, okay, I already see that coming. And so because that's coming, I'm going to get into this Bible verse right in front of me, and I'm going to prepare myself for what's coming. 
Okay, as, as I see this hit coming, as I see that challenge that I'm going to have to overcome because, you know what, I've, I've been there before. You're, you're, you see what you're doing? You're allowing maturity to develop. And so I see this coming at me. I see like it's going to, it could throw me off because about two years ago, I was completely thrown off last time this happened. So I see it coming. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to spend some time with the Father, and I'm going to get my heart ready because when that comes, I need to be able to resist. I need to be able to overcome this resistance. So you got to start to anticipate when you're going to need to change gears. You may be in a place of celebrating and praising and dancing because you just won this awesome victory over a challenge. But listen, as you anticipate the challenge coming, you made it change gears. And now you got to switch and get your armor on. Now you got to switch and get ready to war. And now you got to switch and get ready to fight because the gears require you so. The challenge requires you so. And so, number one, you got to... You got to look ahead and you got to see the vision that's ahead of you, the purpose in your life that God has placed. And number two, you have to anticipate the need to change gears. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 10 says, three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. And each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power is works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That is why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, the hardships, the persecutions, the troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. As you anticipate the need to change gears, you have to acknowledge, listen, I may be struggling for a second, as you're changing your gears, it may be a little wobbly at first, but for when I am weak, then I am strong. I may be shaky for a moment. I may be a little delirious for a second. I may have been a little shaken up by this, but for when I am weak, I am strong. Number three says to gather up your momentum. Or if we were to spiritually say what this would look like, it would mean to build your faith. Gather that momentum. And in this moment, he's referring to this, this, this you know, okay, so now I've, I've, I started looking ahead. I know what's ahead of me, okay? I, I've done that part. I've anticipated where exactly on this mountain I'm going to need to change gear. So I see that happening. Okay, now I have to start pedaling, and I have to make sure that I gather up just the right amount of momentum for me to be able to climb this hill. I need to make sure I'm gathering just enough momentum if not more, for me to not only make it to the hill, but to have power to even go over it. I need to build my faith. I need to build my faith so that I have just enough that when I'm faced with this obstacle, when I'm faced with this challenge, when I'm faced of, uh, of this hardship, I have just enough to get through it. I have what I need and what it takes for me to overcome. I have what I need and what it takes for not only to overcome, because, you see, it's one thing, and this is what I have learned in, 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 in areas like this, it's one thing to overcome, okay? It does take, it takes a specific strength for you to overcome. But it's another thing to be able to overcome and then, like Paul said, use that in order to finish what he has assigned to you and use it to be able to bring hope to someone. So you overcome to help someone else overcome. You overcome for someone else to get through. You push on so that someone else can get over that hill. And so Romans 10, 17 tells us how to build our faith consequently faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of christ you want to build your faith you want to make sure you have enough spiritual momentum the best and most proven effective way for you to do that is to hear the word of god read the bible to yourself heck have the person next to you read the bible to you have someone, uh, let it play on, on audio. Go to our church app and, and, and listen to the healing scriptures and listen to the audio of Bible. Uh, listen, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. So if we want to build faith, we need the word of God. It doesn't get easier than that. Number four, once I've looked ahead and once I've anticipated a need to change gears, and now that I'm gathering up momentum, I'm now climbing up this hill I'm already on my way up. Now the pressure is increasing. It's no longer the same elevation of where I was before. It was, it's no longer this flat land. It's, 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 it's different now. 
Now, now, as I've already changed all the gears I can change, there's pressure. Okay, so the, the bike, the instrument has done all, it's, all it can do. I now have to throw in some effort in order for me to get through. So what I have to do, I have to get out of the saddle. I have to get out of the saddle. In other words, he has to, you, he can no longer pedal and climb while he's sitting down on this bike. He has to now get up and create enough more, a little bit more power for him to get through. It's, that's right. Look at that. You're a fast, uh, listening to the word of God. That was quick. That was quick. Good job. At least we know they're taking notes. Faith comes by hearing. They wanted to hear the word of God. So get out of the saddle and activate that faith. Philippians 2 verse 16 says, hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. See, all, all of this hearing of the word of God and building your faith and building momentum and gathering up, it's for something. It's not for nothing. Uh, you're not just doing it to have this, this big storage boat of faith. What you're doing is you're creating enough momentum because as you look ahead, you see, yeah, there's still a mountain to climb. And as you're doing life, as you're living out for God, as you're following Jesus, listen, that you, you may have built up your faith. You may feel strong. You may feel ready. But listen, there still is a challenge coming. You may have overcome that one obstacle, and you may have gotten over that just well, but that doesn't change the fact that life is still life, that things still happen, and you will face it. And so you have to build it, and then you have to activate it. And number five says to enjoy the journey, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start to close with this last point. Enjoy the journey. Now, at this point, the, the, the cyclist is at the top of the hill and getting ready to take this nice, beautiful cruise uh, down the mountain and saying, enjoy the journey. When I think of this, though, and I think of the, the, the you know, I've gone through all these steps, right? I've, I'm facing a mountain. I'm facing a challenge. I'm, I'm looking at the vision ahead, all right? I've been, living, I've been living for God. I've been serving him. I've been doing all this. And Okay, I've been hit a few times, so I've learned how to adjust when life hits. I've learned how to change gears when need to change, and I've done all that stuff, and I, I've learned how to build my faith now. Okay, I'm, I'm reading the Bible more. I'm praying a little bit more. I'm getting around people who can encourage me, who can speak life into me. I'm, I'm doing those things, and so I'm building my faith. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good, and then you know what? Hey, I've even went the extra mile, and I, I've begun to... to, to, to do something on my own. I've begun to share the word of God. I've begun to, to now uh, witness to people and, and lead people to Christ. And I began to share the gospel. And I'm doing all of this stuff, okay? I'm doing all of this. But then the challenges don't stop coming. And though I may have accomplished getting to the top of this hill, as I look ahead and I look towards the prize, I can't help but see the other mountains that are, that are in front of me. And as you begin to see the other mountains that are in front of you, what you really begin to think of is what all the work it took to get up the one you just finished. And so listen to me. Listen to me, guys. Listen, it's, it's so easy to, to get to a place where your victories are no longer celebrated as victories. And then you just start accomplishing tasks and getting through challenges and, 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 and then you could barely catch your breath and you almost feel like none of that was worth it. You almost feel like all that work was, wasn't, wasn't worth it because I have to do it again. But what I want to remind you is, listen, there is a journey that you can enjoy in this life. And you have to remind yourself to do that. You know, um, and, and, and what I'm about to share, listen, I, I, I don't want to share it in a, in a way that's going to draw any kind of pity or, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't need to... I don't want to boast in, in how I've been able to do this or, or how this happened to me or anything like that. I, I just, listen, we, we firmly believe and I firmly believe I, I can't be up here speaking unless there's something that I've experienced. I can't be up here telling you what it requires unless I myself have been challenged with having to do so. And so, you know, um, in the past two years, I, I have lost... Not lost, but I, four of my family members have passed away. Within the first year, three did. It was my dad, his sister, and then his dad. So my dad passed away in May 
of 2015. Nine months later, just when our family was kind of getting our bearings together and we we're finally able to kind of move forward and now we're like, okay, we, we can do this. We're, we're, we have each other. We, we can make it through. Uh, nine months after, my aunt passes away, his sister, younger sister. So now we have this thing to deal with and we're like, okay, you know, we, 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 we have faith. We believe, you know, we, we've seen this happen before. We've seen this challenge before, and we know how to change gears now. We know what to do when this happens. And so we do it again. And so we, we get together. We, we get strong together. You know, we, we, we have to trust each other. And about four months after that, my grandpa passes away. And so now here we are, one year anniversary of my dad's passing, and my grandpa passes. And so just as we're reminded of this one year, here we go again faced with another mountain of how do we get through this? What else do we need to do? And so that, that happens and, and, and we're, you know what time has gone on and, and, and you, 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 you get together and you build your faith and we've done all that. And we had tons of people supporting us and man, that wasn't even the issue. And, and, and I know that that can be the issue. And, 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 and you know what? I never believed that the things that people would say of what happens when someone dies and families get divided. I never believed that that was possible. But you start to see what's happening. And you're like, man, okay, this is real. So now i got to change gears. I can't, I can't start thinking of how I used to think. i got to change gears now. I have to allow some maturity to grow up. I have to build some spiritual momentum to get through. And so you get through that. And we got through that. And about uh, three weeks ago, my dad's last surviving sibling passed away. And so it just so happened that it was the two-year anniversary of my dad's passing. And so as we are mended and healed of our dad's passing, we're then reminded of that life when we find out that his brother passed. And so what, why am I saying this? I, I'm not saying it to, 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 again, to draw pity. I'm not saying it to draw tears to eyes. I'm not, I'm not saying it to do all that. What I'm saying is, is you need to know with each of and every one of those events was an opportunity for me to allow momentum to be stopped. With each and every one of those events, I was presented with the decision like Paul was where, listen, this is what's lying ahead. Yet I still want you to go. And I'm looking at this stuff and I'm like, okay, God, I, 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 I want more momentum to, to remain as I am serving you and fulfilling your vision for my life. And yet this is happening. But this is where enjoying the journey comes in hand. This is where faith is built by hearing from the word of God comes into play. This is where enduring those series of events in order to build a character that overcomes means something. This is where spiritual momentum is now important. Because as much as I have the opportunity to allow momentum to be stopped and to allow the life that I've chosen to live for God and to allow the plans and the purposes that he has put in front of me and predestined me for to be brought to a halt, I also have the choice for allow it to catapult me and to advance me and to propel me into what he has called me to do. And so you're here tonight. And if you've been faced with a series of events where, where you feel like you've been pushed into this corner of hopelessness because you've experienced one after the other, and listen, you've done all that you knew to do. I'm here to tell you that God has created spiritual momentum and he has transferred it. Jesus Christ himself has transferred by his Holy Spirit this momentum to your life. And the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you today. And as that Holy Spirit lives in you today. He lives in you to be your helper. Why is he my helper? Well, because the Holy Spirit knows, just like he told Paul, that there's going to be troubles ahead in your life. That there is going to be challenges. There is going to be things that you're going to be facing that you've never had to face before. You've never been trained or taught on how to approach it. But because the Holy Spirit dwells in you, he will help you to get through it. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.